Wait, um, Lumberjock said I want to get you caught in an implement loop filming you here in the mirror. So I'm going to move on to the uh, project I wanted to show you, which is my green and green coffee table. And it is a solid mahogany table. It's got a very wide top made up of up about three boards. You can see this board right here on the right and this board on the left are partners, but they're matched opposite ways. Features breadboards, ends that I rounded here. They're attached with a tongue and groove. Uh, there are square mortises that have been cut out and drilled for screws that attach it and allow, they allow the uh, breadboard end to float. It uh, can move back and forth without uh, damaging the tabletop or itself. I plugged these with walnut plugs. I didn't want to use um, ebony. I just want to try something different. So that's a departure from the original. I really like this breadboard over here. I'll show it to you. I saved these breadboards from another project and they have some really neat grain on them. I don't know if you can see that in the video that I'm showing. I added these corbels because I thought the tabletop was a little bit wide. So I wanted to uh, make it look like it was being supported. The legs have kind of a neat feature that they are chamfered on the bottom to make them look like they're floating off the ground. All you do is you take a chamfering bed or a block plane and you chamfer around the edges and it makes it look like the legs floating. Stretcher, it's a long stretcher. On the end, it's got a through tenon into the rail and it's rounded over. If you look from the top, you can see that it's rounded over. It's got a little tongue protruding through. These are called, I think, bird's beaks. They're carved with a chisel. All you do is you take a chisel and you kind of point into them. The tenons and the legs are pegged with dowels and then some not so great cut mortises. You can see that's a poorly cut one. I had some problems with the pegs. I think that'll probably be one of the greatest challenges for everyone working on the Thorsten table. That one's pretty nice and pillowy. Let's try to make the corbel look like it was going through and then out again. It's just glued on to the outside. So one of the best features of this table is its drawer. The drawer is a drawer that's cut from this entire piece of wood became the drawer, so the grain flows from across. You can see right here to here. The way you make these is you take a long piece of wood, you rip it at the bottom of the drawer height, then you can cut out the drawer from here and here, and you re-glue this piece to this, and this piece to this. But before you do it, you slide it back over to accommodate for the kerf the cut you made. The drawer is called a push me pull me drawer which means that when you push it on one side it comes out on the other side. And I can pull out that drawer and you can see how it's built. It goes all the way through. So the drawer's got a quarter inch mahogany bottom solid wood. It's built with finger joints which are protruding and then rounded over these little bird's beak carvings again. The handle of the drawer is made with just taking a rectangular piece of wood and then using an OG bit to relieve the underside of it to do it with a push stick and a featherboard so you don't OG your finger. And then the top is given this curve by um, running it on a sander to shape it to whatever you like. It's a nice drawer. It's functional. You can put coasters in it. Never had an interest in coasters till I made some furniture. And I got really interested in having a wide variety of coasters. Um, some mistakes I made. A little bit of glue right here. See that? That crummy peg joint. And using saplet on that corbel right there. Didn't know what I was doing with that. But overall, it's a pretty nice table.